Welcome to the TED interview. Thank you. Very happy to be here. So we, we are thrilled to have you on the show for, for a number of different reasons, for like a dozen different reasons. Name um, all of them. Okay. Really. First, just your voice is, I think, wonderful for podcasts. <laughs> um, you know, we're delighted. I mean, you know, just the, the shows. Um, you've written a wonderful new book, um, and there's so much to talk about. But one of the things that was really lovely about the timing of this is that we're actually, this is part of a series that we're doing on workplaces and, and the future of work. We've been through this you know, radical reinvention of what works. We've been through this radical reinvention of what work looks like over the last two years. And obviously you have either, you know, co-written or co-created two of the defining kind of popular narratives about what work looks like um, in, in the office and parts and rec mm -hmm. um, over the last decade and a half or so. Um, and so we wanted to kind of start by talking about that. Um, and. In thinking it over the other day, I was thinking that, you know, there's a really interesting long history with the sitcom in particular of workplace narratives. I think probably more than any other form. Like, I was straining to think of great, you know, workplace novels or great, you know, <laughs> workplace films. They're just, I mean, there aren't that many of them, I, I think. But yeah. if you think back over the history of TV, I mean, you can go back to... Mary Tyler Moore, obviously, um, even parts of Dick Van Dyke show were like some of the great scenes yeah. in that were in the office. Um, and Murphy Brown, Cheers in a way was kind of for the main 100%. characters, it was a, it was yeah. a workplace comedy. Um, and so, and, and even it's not quite a comedy, but of course Mad Men. Um, and, and so I, I guess my first question is, what is it about that setting that, that makes both you know, rich storytelling possibilities and character arcs, but also comedy possible. What drew you to that kind of environment? Well, I mean, generally speaking, you divide your day into three parts, work, family, and sleep. Can't write a show about what happens when you're asleep. Um, so you have family and workplace as your options. And, you know, family shows are wonderful, but there are limitations to who can be in a family show. And some and in the past that hasn't been a problem really. We're just all in the family. Here's the family, here's the this is a portrait of a, a specific moment at a specific time in American history, and these are the types of people and the generational divides and stuff like that. But workplaces, anyone you can you have the, the world's your oyster. You can put anyone you want in a workplace. And the shows that I've created or worked on, starting with the office, Parks and Rec, Book on Nine Nine, that are set in workplaces. Part of the pitch is when Dan Gore and I were pitching Brooklyn Nine Nine. One of the things we said was literally anyone can be a New York City police officer. <laughs> anyone, and like the, any age, any gender, any ethnicity. Like you get you get to broaden the scope of who can be in the room. Now there are certain family shows like Modern Family started to do this right, um, where they brought in different versions of what a family, how we think about families and. There are certainly interracial marriages and things that can complicate in an interesting way who you're portraying in a family show. But workplaces, you start from the point of anyone you want can work here, right? So that has always been part of the attraction to me is just you you don't you have a blank slate when you start. You don't have to worry about um, you know which version of the American family you are demonstrating. You can just the family is literally you start with everyone in the world, yeah. so you get more variety. So I think that's part of it. And then the other part of it is that you um, you don't really, I mean, you don't get to choose your family, but you sure don't get to choose who you work with. And so the, you know, the office as a, as the sort of er example of this, mm -hmm. the part of the genius was the, of the office, the British office, which then Greg Daniels adapted into the American office is this, there's a line in the British office where Tim, the character Tim is saying, says, um, you, you know, you spend eight hours a day with people and the only thing you have in common with them is, is that you share this little bit of carpet and that there's a whip. So when you form friendship or in his case, fall in love with someone it, coincidentally, because you work with them, that is such a marvelous and wonderful and an interesting thing that this, these two people from two different places happen to be thrown together on the same piece of carpet and they develop this relationship. There's something kind of magical about that. Like you, even though you don't get to choose your family, it's still, you're, 
you're still sort of you pre-love them <laughs> you yeah. know like you you have a relationship with them that is defined by the situation and it feels more magical and interesting i think at least romantically when it happens at work because you think like god how how lucky is this that i happen to have been thrown under this bit of carpet with this other person so you know all all great comedies have elements of romance in them too and i think they're a big reason why comedy shows at work are fun is because it has a little bit of magic to it of like these people were thrown together and then they sort of developed this quasi family um, almost accidentally or something yeah that's really interesting 